I will give a middle class tax cut to over 100 million Americans. I will enact the first ever federal ban on corporate price gouging on groceries. Voters have made it crystal clear that the economy is top of mind as they head to the polls, and most Americans feel like the economy isn't doing well, despite the fact that inflation is down and the GDP has grown. Even the Wall Street Journal says the next president will inherit a remarkable economy. If there's anyone who could explain this, it's Democratic Senator Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts. She joins us now. Good morning, Senator. Uh, so just yesterday. Good morning. Yeah, it's good to have you back in the, <laughs> in the chair. So just yesterday we had uh, former President Trump out there bragging about how he's going to launch a, quote, economic miracle during his presidency. Now, <laughs> I'm, my hope is it's not like his COVID miracle because <laughs> that, yeah. that didn't turn out too well. But I want you to listen to what he had to say um, that he wanted to do. Let's dial in on that. When we win, you are four days away from the best jobs, the biggest paychecks, and the brightest economic future the world has ever seen. I'm going to put 100 percent tariffs, and if that's not high enough, I'll make yeah! it 200 percent. And I announced it a little before the forum, actually, and I said, uh, no, we're going to put 100 percent, and maybe I'll make it 200, maybe I'll make it 300, four, I don't give a damn. I'll make it whatever I have to make it. So maybe this economic miracle may be like the COVID miracle. Could you, could you help us understand exactly what Donald Trump just told the American people he would do to them by imposing a 100, 200 percent, oh, I don't give a damn, 300 percent tariff. Uh, could help people understand exactly what tariffs are and what they're not. Okay. So understand this. The underlying economy, very, very strong. The question is costs for families. What are costs, you know, what are families actually spending? So right now, Think of all the things around your house, the washing machine you just bought, the refrigerator. Think about what you're wearing, the sweater you've got on, the shoes. A lot of those things came from other countries. And right now, there's a lot of competition, and you end up paying a price that's basically whatever is charged in that country. They send it over here. If there's a tariff on that item, as Donald Trump talks about, and he's talking about a 100% tariff, if that item costs, let's just say those shoes cost $50 to import here to the United States, it won't be $50, it'll be $100, or $150, or $200, wherever Donald Trump wants to go with this. And what that means is that everyone in this country will be paying more, more for refrigerators, more for washing machines, more for sweaters, and more for shoes. That's what these across-the-board indiscriminate tariffs do. It's just like adding a tax on top of every single thing that your family buys. That's Donald Trump's economic plan for your family. So, Senator uh, Alicia... Guys. Simone, I, well, I mean, I just, right? I mean it's just we just it's just like shook. clapping for shook. it when you're like, do you understand what's going to be? All right, I, I have a question for you. Um, I, I want you to respond, Senator. I feel like I'm already Melbourne asking Senator Elizabeth Warren to respond to Cardi B, but I want you to take a listen to what Cardi B had to say out on the stump. Here she is. Okay. He said he's going to protect women whether they like it or not. I'm repeating it. Donnie Dunk, please. Protection for women, especially if we're talking about maternal and mental health care, is in telling them what to do with their bodies. It's supporting them and giving them the care they need for what they choose to do with their bodies. You know, we talk a lot, Senator, about these issues in silos, the way we've talked about reproductive care, the way we talk about the comments that were made in Madison Square Garden uh, about Puerto Ricans. All of it, to me, comes under this umbrella of who is considered a full American with full agency, yeah. who is respected in that final way. And it is very telling to me, I, I, I wonder if it is telling to you, that this is what the Trump campaign is choosing to make their closing argument. 
Mm -hmm. You know, think about what Donald Trump is saying when he says, I'll protect you whether you like it or not. What he's really saying is, I will control you. I will make your most intimate decisions. I will be the one, the government will be the one. A handful of extremists in Washington will be the ones who will decide your personal life and how your life unfolds. And I think of this as truly about who's going to have the power in this country. Donald Trump makes it clear. He wants all that power to come to him. He wants to be a dictator, right? He wants to be the strong man. He wants to be the guy who says he really thinks Hitler's generals were the right guys. Um, he also wants to say that he and the government should make decisions for everyone else because no one else should have power in a Donald Trump America. And here's the thing. We do have the power. We got the power for three more days to decide whether we want to hand over our power to Donald Trump or whether we want to go out there and work our hearts out for Kamala Harris and Tim Walz and grow the power for all of us, grow our power to take care of our families economically. I mean, we were talking about this earlier on the question of look at Trump's economic plans, look at Kamala Harris's economic plans. She's going to go after the price gougers at the grocery store and the gas pump. So you've got more money in your pockets. She's the one who says she's going to go after trying to help families. Um, senior care for all those folks who have an elderly parent that they're trying to figure out how to get care for them. Kamala Harris says we're going to find ways to do in-home care for people and help take that burden off the family. She's been out there on junk fees, making sure we get rid of junk fees, $35 insulin. In other words, things that bring down costs for your families, let people be able to strengthen their own families and let women make their own health care decisions. That's, that's what this election is about. And for three more days, we, the voters, have the chance to make the decision. Want to hand all the power to Donald Trump, or do we want to keep that power for ourselves and have more opportunity for hardworking middle class Americans? Mm. You know, Senator, it just really strikes me that this is this is the first presidential election since stops. We had a midterm election, and I don't think that the the data actually fully captured prior to the midterm election, the effect that Dobbs was having on the electorate. And I, I, I do think that it is similar in this, you know, for, for Tuesday when voting ends, because that's the end of election, end of voting, the beginning of election week. Um, we've been talking about this this morning, and I, we just want to put this up on the screen. The Texas Tribune um, talks about another abortion death. Um, a pregnant teenager died after trying to get care in three visits to Texas emergency rooms. Uh, the, the first hospital diagnosed Candace Fale's daughter, um, Nevea uh, Crane, with uh, strep throat um, without investigating her sharp abdominal pains. Then she went back again. Um, she screened positive for sepsis, but her six-month fetus had a, had a heartbeat. So the hospital said that um, they, they couldn't do anything for her and yeah. that she was fine to leave, and then she died. Uh, earlier, I, 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 mis mm -hmm. I misspoke and noted it was Candace Fails. This is her daughter. This is just real for women across the country and men and their <laughs> families in a way that um, it, it, it wasn't. It was theoretical, you know, in 2016 and in 2020. But this is not a theoretical conversation anymore. That's right. And, you know, <clears throat> I'm reminded in this, this is our moment in history. We have a decision to make here. And partly it's about recognizing 30% of all women live in states that effectively ban access to abortion. And the stories are starting to trickle out about what that really means. And that it means for some women that they die because a handful of extremists have changed the law and made it impossible for them to get the medical care that they need. But understand this. It's not going to be 30% if Donald Trump and J.D. Vance take over the White House. I know 
that they recognize that their position is, in, is unpopular. So they're trying to put up as much smoke screen as they can about this. But the reality is they are coming for access to abortion everywhere. And that means Wisconsin. That means Michigan, where Michigan fought so hard to protect access to abortion. They're coming to overrule that at the federal level. The plans are laid out. J.D. Vance has already worked on how to execute them with the Department of Justice. They're coming for Pennsylvania. They're coming for every state in the union. We've got three days to fight back against this and say no. And understand this, the only way that we will protect all people in the United States to make their own health care decisions is for Kamala Harris and Tim Walz to take the White House, for Democrats to maintain a majority in the Senate, and for Democrats to take control of the House. We get all three of those then we will sign Roe versus Wade into law and women will not have to die because they can't get access to the medical care that they need.